What's up, everyone? Thought I'd do a quick live stream, but I never do anything quick. Yes. <laughs> okay. So today I thought I would talk about fats to adapt. What are the best fats to adapt? How much? And also the best ones to cook with. We need to break this stuff down. I'm going to drink some water and wait for you guys to come into the chat. Now, I just happen to have some oil, some fat here. Let's talk about some cooking fat. So right here I have some, okay, you guys are coming in. Right here I have some of this avocado oil. Now, if I pour it, it is not very green. Let me see if I can pour it into something. Put into my salt thing. Let's see. Okay. That, you see that? That's a light yellow. Hold on. Okay. Can you guys see that this is a light yellow color? That's a plum. Uh, your olive oil, I mean olive oil, avocado oil is, oh, hi from Los Angeles where I used to live. Your avocado oil is not supposed to be this color. This is not a good quality olive oil. This will oxidize in seconds. Yes, gosh. And this is the nice expensive brand from, dare I say Walmart, because I'm in a small town. See this? Not a good avocado oil. Now, so I don't spill this everywhere. I wanted to pour it out and show you guys that your avocado oil is supposed to be a dark, dark green color. And it's got a bit of a taste. This is probably mixed with canola oil. I'm not even lying. All right. So here we have some avocado oil. This is high in monounsaturated fat. It's mostly monounsaturated fat, like olive oil. Not the best, not the worst to adapt, but not the best. Then we have our coconut oil, right? We have our virgin coconut oil. And can you adapt on coconut oil? No. <laughs> this is a Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. But then we have... One of my favorite fats, which is we've got lard from all the pork belly. Look at that. I mean, I make, I get tons and tons of fat from this pork belly. So this is what I eat. This is what I cook with. So the next fat we have, and I want to go over this. And pork fat is, it's got saturated and monounsaturated fat in it. And the best fats really to cook with. Of John. Oops. We've got butter. We got the Kerrygold butter, right? And then we have ghee. So I'm only pulling out what I actually have in my RV or pulling out of my RV. This lighting kind of sucks, don't it? Let me see if I can fix this lighting, people. Does that make me, is that better? Oh, that's, is that a little better? That makes me a little blue. Okay. Um, so. I don't really like that either. It's still pixelated. Let me go back to the other one. This one? Oh, maybe this one. Yeah, this is the winner. Okay. So we've got the butter and we've got your um, coconut oil. We have your avocado oil that's probably mixed with canola oil. And we have our lard and no ghee. I wish I had ghee in front of me right now and tallow. The best fats to adapt are the best fats to cook with. So here we have lard, right? And here we have butter. The rest of these things like coconut oil, it's not good to cook with. We've got <clears throat> avocado oil, not good to cook with. Olive oil, not good to cook with at all. We've been completely been misled on what's the best fats to adapt and also the best fats to cook with. So let's more do the deep dive of this. 
Okay. The smoke point, right? So the smoke point for um here we go. The smoke points, one of the highest smoke points is you get from this. So they say from the avocado oil. But because it's been processed, even though it's got a higher smoke point, it still has a thing called reactive oxygen species, species, which pretty much means it's oxidizing. When it sits in this glass jar, when the air is hitting it, by the time it hits your pan, it's the worst. This stuff will create a waxy buildup in your arteries, even though it has a high smoking point. Now, that's one of the highest, believe it or not. Then we have our coconut oils, right? Our virgin coconut oils. And if I go down here on the list for coconut oil, didn't I write down the smoke point for it? I thought I did. Let's see here if I can find it. Hold on, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. See here. Coconut oil, where are you? Okay, so coconut oil, it's a uh, smoke point is pretty low. It's pretty low. As are our duck fats. The highest smoking point in an animal fat is coming from, you'll be surprised. Hold on a second, let me get back here. Um, oh, you finally caught me like, yes. Hello from Tennessee, Tammy. So the highest, uh, the food that has a high smoke point, which is best for cooking is ghee. Because ghee, you would think the butter is the same. You see, clarified butter has been cooked. So you would think that it'd be more oxidative or have an oxygen reactive species. Yes and no. The thing is, is that when you clarify the butter, you cook out the protein it's the protein that's unstable. So that's the stuff that gets damaged when you cook under high heat. And that is the reason why ghee is the best cooking fat to cook with, right? Because you've pulled out everything. You've cooked it all out. You've cooked out the proteins. You cooked it out. You cooked it out. You cooked it out. So butter has a pretty high uh, um, smoke point. No, my bad. It has a relatively high. So it's 115 Celsius and 302, 320 degrees in Fahrenheit. Whereas it's really weird because avocado has a 520 because it's been refined. But the problem is it's still oxidizing, even though it's got a higher smoke point. So thinking that you can cook with avocado oil, it's it's still not okay. Um, beef tallow, it's like beef tallow is the next one. It's 250 degrees Celsius and 480, 420 to 482 in Fahrenheit for cooking. So it's also really good for cooking. The tallow is. Lard is under that, but we know that lard is really great for the taste and the texture. Let's see, Sparkling One says, I love butter so much. Unfortunately, it makes my makes me bloated. Would ghee, would ghee be less likely to cause bloating? Yes. So we're going to go into the histamine reactions to the fat as well, because that's something you guys need to understand. Y'all think that this coconut oil is really great. It's got a pretty um, low smoke uh, smoke point level when you cook it, fry it. The oils, the plant fats, they don't fare very well. They have to be refined. And then you take something like avocado oil and it's already oxidizing, just sitting in the jar each day, each minute, each hour. So it's just no good to cook with. And it's got to have that really deep, dark color. I do not cook with this. This is something, this avocado oil is something I'd put on a salad, which salads you would have very rarely because of all the anti-nutrients in the plant. And um, we want to stay away from the dark leafy greens because of the oxalates. Um, let me see. Hi, Stephanie. Ready for all carb? What is it? Is that carving a pumpkin? Oh, you're carving a pumpkin. <laughs> the seeds. That's awesome. Okay. So these are the facts, right? And let's talk about the ones best to adapt on. So the, the thing that completely sucks, and yes, you could try ghee, but even when you process the butter and it's been cooked and you've got, you make uh, ghee out of butter, 
unfortunately you still, some people are so sensitive to the protein still left over, even in ghee. So you can only give it a chance to see if you're bloated or you, if you don't feel well. I'm very lucky because I don't react to any of, any of the fats. Actually, I, I do well with all fats. I don't have any bloating off of any of the high histamine. So the milk proteins, whey and casein that are still left in the butter, which it's only about 98% pure fat or 99. Um, what's left over people react to, even if you try to cook it out and render it, it's still, unfortunately, some people still react. Uh, Hadi says lard is my favorite, but I get too lazy to make it. So I just use olive oil. Don't use olive oil. <clears throat> it took me a long time to get over the ease of oils. It's just so much better. Now for me, I will go and cook the pork, pork belly. I just went to the butcher today and got a bunch of pork belly cut into bacon. And it makes so much fat. I've, I've got it in tons of jars. So use that. When it's mostly pure fat, which this lard really is. I mean, you don't see any bits of, of protein in this. It's pretty. I know that the light is kind of glaring it. Anyway, you don't see any protein. This is almost pure fat, which is amazing. Like I said, uh, lard is, is mostly a monounsaturated fat. It also has saturates in it. It has all three. They all Animal fats have monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, omega-6, and they have uh, saturated fat. So mono, poly, and saturates. Um, we want all three because we're made up of all three. We get the benefits of all three. We need a little bit of omega-6, omega-3, and we need the fat-soluble vitamins that come in animal fat. They're not going to come in coconut oil. They're definitely not going to come in olive oil. I mean, in avocado oil or, or olive oil. Now, the best fats to adapt are animal fat. I've tested this on clients over the years. I've been coaching people for freaking ever. And I always notice when people are using their glucometers and coming back to me in time, they're adapting on fats. The ones that they adapt the most on is butter. And that's if you don't have a histamine response to it. And that's because it's got everything that CLAs and ALAs and vitamin D, E, A, and K. The A in here is amazing. The D in butter is amazing. Amazing. The omega-3s in butter. You know, so for those who can't tolerate butter, it sucks because this is, this is the number that pumps. This is the type of fat that cranks up the ketones the most. Some of you guys can't do it. So then you've got lard and it's, it's very different between each type of person who has histamine. Some cannot tell, uh, sorry, some cannot tolerate tallow and they have to use lard and some cannot tolerate lard and can tolerate tallow. I use all three. If you guys don't like tallow that you buy in jars, like, you know, from fatworks.com or us wellness meats or, um, any of the new companies that have come out that make uh, tallow in, in jars. I think Epic does that too. I'm not really sure. You take it. They come in these size jars with this 16 ounce. Um, I think it's one, one pint. They come in this size. What you do is you take, melt it, right? Not melt it. I'm sorry. You spoon it out, put it in a saucepan and let it melt. Once you let it melt, you add some salt to it. And then when you add some salt, to it, then you uh, pour it back into a jar and you'll be surprised that that tallow will not be so um, waxy once you render it down more yourself with salt. Little hack and it tastes a lot better. Um, let me see here. What do we got? So the best fats to adapt on are animal fats because there's a fatty acid profile, the mono, saturate, and, and poly, the mufus, pufus, and saturates. Monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and saturates. Now, like I said before, tallow has a really nice heating point. It's got a, a smoke point. It's got a higher one than butter. But ghee has a higher one, a smoke point, than tallow. Right? So we've got um, lard further down on the list for the smoke point, but... If you can get lard that doesn't have a lot of, if you don't see any protein in here at all, like I like this one, like see if there's protein on the bottom, 
But up here, this is going to have a higher smoke point than when it gets to this stuff down here, the protein left over in that lard. And I've tested this on people so many years about like, what kind of fats do I adapt on the most? People keep thinking that because it was a coconut oil, oil phase where everybody's like, oh, it's got a high heat point. You can cook with it and it helps you adapt. It doesn't. Coconut oil is amazing in the sense that it has lauric acid in it. And lauric acid is really good for the brain, really good for the brain. And it helps kill microbes in the gut, nastiness, parasites, and um, uh, candida, things of this nature. In fact, concentrated lauric acid is called monolaurin, which is amazing for the gut. Amazing if you don't have a histamine response to it. And like I said, if you're doing avocado oil and it's not super green, it's crap. Let's just keep it real. Um, the lard for me is amazing because I buy so much pork belly that I have a lot of our lard to either spoon and eat, add it to my food, cook with, liquefy it, pour it on a salad, legit. Although I recommend you guys not do salads very often. Um, I can take lard, but I can't take lard too much. Makes me yak. I prefer tallow. I don't know if that's a taste or if you actually have any type of histamine, which is why you might have developed an aversion to it. Now, so, so, so Zaza, Zaza, Zaza has a question. I'm going to take some of your guys' questions. And let me pull up the fat so you guys can look at it. Hold on a second. All right. Look at these fats. They've, they've got like avocado, all the things, olive oil, coconuts. None of these are, there are fats that you, it says seven healthiest cooking oils. Garbage. People don't listen. The next slide over here, you've got that ghee. Ghee is the best, the very best fat to cook with if you don't have a histamine reaction to it. Let's get over to that. So I just Googled this and it's like they all think, see the thing about vegetable oils they refine it and refine it and cook it and demolish it. But I'm sorry, it just the reactive oxygen species in the plant oils, it's been processed so many times. It's so bad for you. Um, healthiest fats. Yolks are good for you. Olive oil, um, I would not say is the, I mean, if you're getting super, super, super virgin olive oil that's coming from really good sources that's not mixed with canola oil. Uh, let's see else what we got here. I just want to see what people you see. Cooking fats, what people think is good. Con canola oil, sunflower oil. None of these oils, even though some of these oils have a higher heat point because they've been processed so many times, doesn't mean that they're good. They're not, even though they, some of them have a high uh, uh, smoke point. The virgin, extra virgin olive oil, yeah, but it's so hard to get it. Um, the ghee is great. The tallow is great. The lard is great. The coconut oil, I would not say don't cook with it. Avocado, do not cook with it. And butter is great. And all of these are keto adaptive but mainly the, the, um, the animal fat is what you want to try to keto adapt. So carnivores, it just fits anyway with what you're trying to do. Let me see if I can get to fatworks.com. Let's go to fatworks.com. Well, hello. Ah. Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm pulling up fatworks.com because they, I love this name. I've always loved the name of this company. All right, let's take a look at their site. 
You might have seen their products at Whole Foods. I'm just looking at the look at the prices of this stuff. This is a joke. Their ghee, you guys, you don't need. Oh, this is duck fat. So duck fat and bird fat is high in omega six. I would not use that all the time. I'd use it sparingly. Um, let's see here. Beef tallow, twenty two dollars for fourteen ounces. What? Who can afford that nonsense? That's ridiculous. You guys, go get beef trimmings from any type of grass-fed butcher if you can find one. And if you can't, oh well. Get the beef trimmings, put it in a pot, and melt it down yourself and just render it down. Don't don't spend $22 on this nonsense. Leaf lard is the fat around the organs. Look at this. $16 for 14 ounces when you guys can literally just go and make it yourself. There it is. There's the lard. Hello. And y'all stop being afraid of, of um, pork fat. It is so good for the brain. So anybody who's got cognitive issues, brain issues, Alzheimer's, get on that pork fat. So they've got $14.30 for the for the free range chicken. No, 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 no. We don't want chicken fat. I thought that was ghee. No, okay. We got the goat ghee. Interesting. 15 bucks. One gallon of leaf lard is a hundred bucks. I cannot. They have a great assort assortment of fat, but the prices are ridiculous. Blech. Let's see here. I'm going to take some of your guys' questions. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let me see. I've noticed recently that I, that after I eat a high fat meal, I'm exhausted. After barely can keep up my eyes open, it's a histamine reaction. Fino, most likely when you're eating high fat like that, you're having a histamine reaction. Unfortunately, when you're having a histamine reaction, your blood sugar can spike just skyrocketed high. You love the recipe for lard? Let me show you the recipe. That's lard. This is pork fat. Add the butcher, give me straight fat. All you have to do is fry it until it's crisp, crispy or just render it in a pot for hours. That's the recipe and add some salt. <laughs> okay. What do you want me to pull this up? Let's see here. What do you recommend for a loose stool after eating more fat? I have a gallbladder and I have a gallbladder and take ox bile and HCL betaine. Not sure what, what next step you'd recommend. You could do lemon water in the morning. That takes time now. That's not going to, that's going to go pretty slow. You can do lemon water. You can do uh, taurine or glycine. These are amino acids that help break down the backing up of cholesterol in the gallbladder or you can do um, lipase, which will help the actual digestion of it from the eating, from the stomach process. Uh, you could do lipase, you could do uh, tutka, you could do ox, well, you're doing ox bile. Tutka, eat your fat with protein, eat very slow and do a gallbladder cleanse, which is a biliary duct cleanse. And that should help out. Some people do this, what is it called? BBP or PPB, or I can't remember. It's uh, where it's an all-inclusive digestive enzymes and people swear by it. I think it's BPP. Oh, it's in my notes somewhere in this thing. Let's see here. Uh, pancreatic, it's PBB, pancreatic something, something. Um, I have no idea how to get the fat needed per day into my meals. Um, Jenny, just, just take it. 
like what I do, I love butter. I know a lot of you can't do it because you have a histamine reaction to it. I take a slice and I, I, or I put a big chunk on my plate. Like I'll take, I don't know, that much, that much, throw it on my plate, cut it up into several, like six tablespoons. And I take chunk of meat, chunk of butter in the mouth, chunk of this, chunk of that. I'll do a video on it. I've done it in the past. I just need to do it again. I'm going to put this stuff back in before it starts to melt because it is hot up in here. It's 81 degrees. I feel so fortunate. If you guys go to my Instagram, it's Stephanie Ketogenic. You can see that I went to the butcher today, the local butcher, and there's a farm. All the animals are coming from his farm, or most of them, I shouldn't say. Uh, uh, most of them are coming from his farm. And um, I was like, okay, I want a quarter. I said, I want a quarter pig and a quarter uh, cow. And then that should pretty much finish off the stuffing up of, of stuffing up my freezer. So while meats go skyrocketed high in the supermarkets, I won't give a shot. I really su suggest that you guys do the same. I bought a freezer refrigerator combo. It was 600 bucks. It was on sale, but I got it. It does both. It's energy savings. You should buy the tag. It says you're only using 47, how many kilowatts per year on it? Something really, really low. So um, you, I just, I literally, some people, I love fat. Like I've always loved fat. So I will either drench it. I'll even make a soup of fat like legit the fattier the better like i cannot stand chicken chicken breast if it's just drenched in fat and ghee or butter divine see how it says cut the fat into small pieces and then put it in the crock pot then strain it it's so cheap and easy lard is 15 dollars at the store for like a 14 ounce jar so yeah, you can put it in a crock pot. It'll melt down. You can do that with beef fat. You can do that with any fat, pretty much. That's an animal fat. Is paprika a good seasoning? Uh, just some people have, I believe it's a nightshade. Just be very careful for anybody who's got a thyroid issue. You gotta be careful for those, those nightshade uh, seasoning. Uh, I take, I can't take lard too much. Makes me, okay, I already said that, read that. What do you recommend for loose stools after eating more fat? So I, it's the, it's the, um, I suggest the lipase to first start with or go straight to ox bile. But you said, what's the next step? I think you need a little biliary duct cleanse. You need to sit on the toilet for like two days. Uh, Marcy asks, how often should you check your glucose? You should check your glucose if you're starting off every day. Now I'm getting a lot more, um, I'm doing keto carnivore. Now, as you guys know, uh, Kelly and I just interviewed each other and uh, she, we didn't really know each other, to be honest. She reached out to me. Um, and I've set a lot of videos that say that no, no guru is completely honest and I stand, I will stick to that. Uh, we all have a bad day. Mm, so, I wanted to reiterate that, but with that said, she has added a lot more fat into her diet. Thank God. And, um, uh, it's just, uh, really, really important that you guys understand that when you're adding more fat, you have to make sure that the gallbladder is functioning properly. You also have to make sure that like, like I said, if you do a biliary duct cleanse, um, if you like Marcy's asking about the blood sugar, if you're starting off doing this kind of stuff, you're doing carnivore, you got to make sure to check your blood sugar every morning fasted right at, right when you wake up, once you start walking around, the blood values changes, change. Um, and then I would check your blood sugar once a week after, after a breakfast, lunch, and a dinner, no intermittent fasting, um, by two hours after a meal. You can also check your ketones if you ch want to check if you're in ketosis. You cannot just check the ketones and you cannot just check check the blood sugar. You have to check both. Uh, you test your ketones like once a week. I say once a week because the, the strips are more expensive. The glucose strips are pretty cheap. 
test your ketone strips once a week. Uh, fast it. You cannot test ketones any other part of the day because every time you eat something, you're going to show ketones. We want the we want to see ketones in the blood from sleeping when you haven't done anything and not from anything that you ate, like body fat ketones. Um, I just found you today, so I'd love all that you have info on. I'm putting in. I'm 49. I'm starting to change my way of life and no more sugar, low carb. I have no problem with butter. Thank you so much. Awesome. 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 So, um, it's so weird because normally you guys, I just like, I'm, I'm riding in my lane. I normally don't collaborate with people, but I have to admit this collaboration with Kelly has been really cool. She's a sweetheart. She's reached out to me a few times. I've just been so much in my anti guru world that it just kind of like was like this to everybody. But I realize it is really important to have a few people who are positive, who are in the same mindset of trying to help people. So I'm really happy for this new collab. So if you guys want to go to see her video, I need to link. I keep forgetting to link her channel in my video. I'll do it after this one um, to go check her out and subscribe on Kelly Hogan's uh, videos and, and check out her story because she's gone through a journey and her children and all of this. So uh gee is so straight out of the jar i don't even like this to melt it down. i know gee is so if you find the right key it's so good uh i know this is off the fat subject but what is the purpose of oysters and water and do you eat them straight out of the can or cook so oysters i'm really promoting promoting oyster extract but oysters are lovely if you're just eating oysters fresh oysters are out of a can problem with them being out of a can is that people have a really high histamine reaction to them the same as sardines um they're not as high in potassium as when they're concentrated meat in a capsule that's been desiccated but the 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 benefits of oysters are you know the iodine the zinc copper but excuse me vitamin c and potassium Oh, and vitamin D. But in the desiccated, which is, like I said, it's the meat. It's uh, it's freeze dried and pulverized into powder. Those have a lot more of everything because it's concentrated. Um, Pre-packaged stuff is full of preservatives that makes it taste really bad. Which one are we talking about? I missed your comment. Are you talking about ghee? Okay, what, what do you recommend for a loose stool? I'm eating my fat. Okay, sounds like you have a gallbladder problem. So that's the whole, start with, so you can start with lipase. If that doesn't work, that's a digestive enzyme, a fat digestive enzyme. Then you would go to uh, an ox bile. If that doesn't work, you go to tooth cut. If that doesn't work, then you're, well, it's, it will work to some degree. Now, some people have a histamine reaction because it's desiccated, bacteria is growing on the bile salt. So then you might want to try a lipase. It might have a histamine reaction to that then you better do a cleanse and use tutka or uh taurine i mean not tutka, a uh, lipate no wait, taurine or or glycine my bad it's been a long day people okay even after eating high fat meal i still feel hungry well what's your version of high fat i bet you don't eat as much fat as i do if you ate as much fat as i do then if you still are hungry then you might have leptin resistance because your body needs so much equipment to break down fat. You need so much. You need lipase, you need pepsin, you need stomach acid, you need uh, a functioning gallbladder. So if you're still hungry, then quite possibly you are leptin resistant because you need so much to break down. You should not be hungry or you're just not eating enough fat, my people. <laughs> okay, let me see. Hey, Stephanie, I've I've looked through your channel to find your thoughts on hormonal IUDs. Uh, I would say do not use an IUD. Yeah, don't use them. Take your temperature. Don't use IUDs. I see so many women have problems with these IUDs, especially the copper IUDs. Toxic, 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 toxic. Um, thank you. I'll give it a try. Thank you. Loved the interchange interviews between you and Kelly, you touched on 70 grams of protein for female. No, no, no. Yeah, that's a high. Uh, what about men? 
Okay, so pretty much, I don't think that women should be eating 70 grams of protein. I think they should be eating around 60. It's around 50 to 60. That should be enough if your fats are high enough if you're doing trying to be ketotic. Some women who are super active have nice GLUT4 receptor, receptor sites uh, that uptake glucose. Your body uses that glucose in the muscle cell. Uh, you know, somebody like myself, uh, I can eat a lot of protein and use it as energy rather than have it being converted back into triglycerides in the cells. So those people who are eating 70 grams of protein who are not lifting and have the muscle mass than I do, you can drop it down unless you're a really tall woman. I'm, I'm only five foot three. Uh, so, um, uh, the men, their protein allotment is between 60 and 95. I don't like for men to go over a hundred or even touch a hundred. And that depends also on the, the guy's height. Now I did have a guy who was six foot three. I coached him and his blood sugar would spike over 75 grams of protein, but he would also eat up to 400 grams of fat. Now you got to remember, I explained this on Kelly's channel. The reason why you can get away, uh, get away with very low protein is because when you're insulin sensitive, you don't need a lot of protein to get into the cells. Insulin is the driver of amino acids. So basically, if your insulin is working and it goes knock, knock, knock on the door and the door goes, come in, then if the if the if the door which is the cell and the cell receptor is letting that protein in then via insulin insulin is the uber driver and the taxi cab to drive protein into that door that garage if you're insulin resistant you're going to require more carbohydrates and more protein to get the protein and amino acid allotment to build muscle but then you start to get fat that's why body bodybuilders off season look like big swollen puffy mother suckers. Um, so when it comes to um, let me get rid of this. Okay, so when it comes to um, men, it's between sixty. If you're a small dude and you don't lift, you don't need a lot of protein. You don't need a lot of protein, especially if you are adapted with a very moderate to low insulin secretion. And you want a nice, strong pancreas and biliary duct system to have that go. So that's a whole nother conversation about liver function and should you take milk thistle or should you do a cleanse that is affecting also the cleansing of the liver and the kidney and the gallbladder and pancreas. Okay, so the Dawn's phenomenon. Here's I feel like I'm almost, almost Leah, an expert about uh, at the Dawn's phenomenon. For those who don't know what the early morning Dawn's phenomenon or effect is, it's when your blood sugar is high in the morning because you're cranking out cortisol because that's your normal cortisol rhythm. Cortisol should always be highest in the morning. If you're awake at night, you have too much cortisol going on at night. You should have melatonin flip over around four o'clock in the afternoon between two and four, especially when you hit four, cortisol is supposed to go down and melatonin is supposed to rise and get you ready to hibernate overnight and sleep. So people who wake up with high blood sugar, it can be the early morning dawns phenomenon, but people on keto aren't going to have blood sugar over hundred. Dare I say late eighties, early nineties, if it's a true dawns phenomenon, but most people that I've coached who are in a ketogenic range will have a blood sugar between 75 and 83 and still have the right cortisol rhythm. So those are the numbers you really want to look for. And what's up, MW8000? Check with close two hours after eating a meal. Yes, yes. And you only need to do that like once a week. And you want to compare that number to your fasted number which is the first number you check when you go, I'm awake or I'm awake. Is Keto Mojo good, a good tool to get a measure of glucose and ketones? Yes. Ketones are more accurate than glucose, but yes. I'm going to take this one off. Okay. All right. And Kelly does seem cool. Really enjoyed your, you and her, uh, you and her video. Saw just today. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. I mean, 
she reached out to me. This is the second time she did it. I think when I was still in Kelly. Um, she's just a very, very positive light in this whole thing, in this community. Um, I was a little hesitant at first because uh, I don't promote two pounds of beef with salt. And she's like, no, 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 no. We talked on the phone. She's like, no, I don't promote that anymore. And I was like, okay, good. Because that's what you were doing before. And she doesn't promote electrolytes. And so I am like massaging her brain, trying to get her into the electrolyte reality. <laughs> she, when she inter interviewed me, she's like, how would you coach people um, on strict carnivore? And I'm like, who want to do carnivore forever. And I said, well, the first thing you would do is don't do carnivore forever. And I stand by that. So that's how we differ. And I always say that because there's people are hitting too many problems with their electrolytes. I have a friend, she did keto for three years. Now, clearly she had electrolyte issues before she did it, but it, she had a heart attack because she was so man magnesium deficient. You can't mess with your electrolytes. And just because you do fine, doesn't mean that the next person will. So you gotta be very careful with that. But other than that, our differences on what we think like she really believes oh do this forever and i'm like don't do it forever it can damage you besides that that's very true um that's you know i'm gonna stand by that um but besides that she's super sweet and super positive and um very inspirational to a lot of people so i commend her for that and to come at me i mean i'm, I'm i come across as a hard ass so i definitely give her props to reach out to someone like me Okay, love Kelly Hogan. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Let me see. I'm like, I try to be. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm more of like a real, I'm more real. Like I'm more, I'm more up in your face type of person. Oh, you enjoyed the, the collab. That was cool. You know what I like about her is that she's very innocent in her, in her vibe. You know what I mean? She's just... She feels like she's like kind of quirky and fun. I think a lot of these gurus are so, um, they're too pedantic, sardonic, and she's more like a bright light. So yeah, that's why I, I decided, cause I'm like, I'm, I've only been interviewing um, real people with real stories, like no gurus. And I decided to interview, interview her because she just kept coming at me with such positive energy. And I was like, how can I not? Let me see. Difference between belly hunger and mental hunger. Well, sometimes people are, their electrolytes are jacked. And so they're actually needing electrolytes when they're not actually physically growling. Their stomach's not like churning for food. So sometimes that's a reason why people are like mentally hungry. Some people just have food addictions or they have low blood sugar in their bodies. Like, you know, um, they'll do like a low or a carnivore or a keto diet and they'll still crave certain foods because they're not adapted and their body's still wanting glucose. Let's see here. Oysters grow wild around here where i'm where i'm from but the city pump pumps too much funky stuff into our waters i know that's what kind of freaks me out a little bit i still haven't bought oyster extract myself i think after this i have to take a mental note and buy it because i think the benefits from it is amazing i just gotta make sure i don't have a histamine response to it but i don't really react to fish so i should should be good to go or seafood is keto mojo a good tool to get a measure of glucose and ketosis okay read that Ghee versus tallow, ghee. After watching, but some people have a histamine reaction, so they can't. After watching your collab with Kelly, I did buy oysters. Okay, but oysters, it's better to get the extract. Oysters, she she went and she bought all the oyster stuff. And, and I was like, no, no. She's like, it doesn't have, it only has like 70 grams of, of um, or 70 milligrams of potassium. I'm like, no, get the extract. And then she found one that was 300. Let um, me see. Makes me feel better about eating them. I love raw oysters, but I'm in the West Texas area. Okay. Um, I think it's good as a supplement is the extract, but if I think oysters in general are great if you can find them that don't have coming from toxic sea, seas, which almost don't, does not exist anymore. Okay. What about no gallbladder? You can still do a uh, 5150 keto girl. Um, you can still do any type of high fat keto or carnivore, which is pretty much keto uh, as far as getting to ketosis. 
um, without a gallbladder, you just really, really need to keep your keep your biliary duct system flowing. Okay. If the liver is bogged down and estrogen dominant, then the rest of those organs are going to get bogged down. And then the gallbladder won't find another place to put the bile, the, the bile salts from your liver. Your liver makes the salt, your gallbladder holds it and then releases, releases it into the duct system to meet the, meet them at the small intestine to break down food. So first of all, do a nice cleanse, get that whole, get the piping, you might do milk thistle for the liver. Um, so your gallbladder finds a new place, keep your stress down, gets, go to bed early because that will help store that bile somewhere else. Or you can use ox bile to cut taurine, glycine, lemon water, or lipase, but you can't be on lipase forever. No. Let me see. Can you... Oh, guys, don't forget to like up this stream. I don't check to see who's liking because I'm too dang busy. But it does help bring people to my humble channel where I speak my mind. Okay, can you take a bit, a talk? Can, can do, uh, can I read? Lord have mercy, girlfriend. Can you do a bit, <laughs> a bit about which fats might be low histamine foods? I'm reacting to all of it. Okay, so it may not be matter if it's low or high that your leaking gut is that bad. So that's where histamine intolerance really is from. And then an imbalance of, of microbes in the gut afterwards. Um, let's talk about the high histamine foods. I should do a video on that. This is almost too bright, the light. Super white in the face and dark in the arms. Please take vitamin D. Um, Low histamine foods are going to be fresh meats, fresh slaughter. That means try to find butchered meat that has not been hung for 10 days. Numero uno. After the another thing that you want is you want to get your meat frozen in the supermarket. You don't want it unfrozen. They have to freeze it. They're not like slaughtering the animal and then taking it to the market unless it's my butcher, which has a processing center right there where the farm is. Then you're getting it bloody in bags. And I've gotten that before where it's just bloody, 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 bloody. That's the best. Um, you also, if you get your meat, put it in the freezer if you have histamine and only eat your meat. You can only unthaw it at night and then eat it in the morning. You can't have it for leftovers because it's growing bacteria on it. Uh, so that's low histamine, how to prepare food. Now, fish is high histamine. So beef, uh, any of the meat, pretty much any of the meat other than fish that's fresh is lower histamine. Um, let's say your spinach, your leafy greens are higher histamine than your brassica family, which is the cruciferous broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, asparagus, blah. But everybody reacts different. Um, your fats, like I said, you either react to tallow and you don't react to lard or you react to lard and you don't react to tallow, you react to everything. And if so, then you have to work on healing that gut wall, which is then to rotate your foods constantly. So you're not eating the same thing every day because you get a bacteria overload. Then the body's just histamine, 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 histamine. The other thing is try to find things like if you don't react to thymus, thymus is great because it's got diamine oxidase actually in that fatty meat. Um, you have to experiment, to be honest. I mean, high histamine foods are going to be your dairy, your butter. Ghee is a lower histamine over butter. Um, but some people still, uh, the yolks are lower the histamine than the whites. The whites are very allergenic or just no eggs at all these flies in here. Lord have mercy, child. Um, okay, I need to move on because so many questions. Uh, let's see here. Trying your low carb high fat protocol and I feel good on white rice, but makes my facial complexion look fatty and aged. Tried heavy cooking organic broccoli and I got the heart palps. And, okay, so you're having histamine, Tatiana. Um, have you tried parsnip if you don't do well? And have you tried other types of white white rice? Brown rice poison. 
can't do that. Uh, if you're having a problem with broccoli, you are having a histamine reaction to it, so you can't eat that. You have to take it in tiny, tiny little small amounts. So you might want to do like a mostly carnivore with a little bit of plants for that prebiotic fiber. This is how Kelly and I differ. I 100% emphatically disagree because I've worked with clients for over so many years and all the people see when I, how, how we, how we are coming together is just trying to help people and trying to get people to be ketotic on high fat. There, there are numbers though. You can't just eat high fat. You have to consider the gallbladder, the fact that you have enough stomach acid, you have to make sure that you're in ketosis. Um, how we separate is that she thinks you could do it forever. And I know that you can't just because I am sorry, I have a hearts, touch, 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 hearts. but girl got to keep it real. I've just watched too many people lose diamond oxidase and N-methyl transferase by doing carnivore too long. Yes, it's a problem. And electrolyte issues up the wazoo. And the problem is that over time, uh, you might notice a little bit of, you may not notice like you're having a hard time taking breaths. You don't work out as effectively. You have a lactic acid burn. These are all signs of doing carnivore too long. Plus your booty, the liquid stool or the constipation. These are all signs and clues not, clues not to do it too long. We need that prebiotic fiber and we need the electrolytes. Avocado, if you don't have an electrolyte issue, then I try to get people to be an avivore, which is an avocado carnivore because you get the fiber and then you get the high amounts of potassium and then you can be mostly carnivore if you don't have a histamine response to the avocados. Uh, it's super easy to make. Yeah. You just sit and let it just, just slow cook in a, in a, um, you clarify it slowly in a pot. Uh, I used to eat eggs and bacon fat all the time. It was so good, but stopped eating eggs and just did a colon cleanse for parasites, which papaya seeds and castor oil, psoriasis and eczema is clearing up. Um, wait a minute. Why don't you just wait? I don't understand. Oh, for pair. Oh, you can, you're, you're talking about like giardia, that type of parasite. Um, I don't think you have to do oh, papaya seeds and castor oil. Some people react to these seeds in, in the oil. So just, just FYI, if you want to clear up eczema different if you're trying to do parasite clean eczema is leaky gut that's a histamine reaction which you do not need to do this cleanse for eczema you just need to do a lot of stuff you might need to uh work on stress because that can make parasites explode um the quality of food uh you might want to get some pre pre and probiotic fiber in your gut in low amounts Let's see. Is mineral water good to replenish electrolytes? No. <laughs> you have to take them on these low carb diets because we just hemorrhage them. Keto or carnivore? It's when the guru say keto or carnivore cures everything under the sun. It doesn't. <laughs> it's like pause. Nothing, no diet will cure everything under the sun. Your entire 24 hour day is what's going to be indicative of that. You can have the perfect people like I did the macros and they were perfect. I'm still having issues with like my blood sugar. And I'm like, well, you had insulin resistance before you've trained your body to have crank out too much cortisol. Are you stressed all the time? Do you have, are you going through gluconeogenesis? Are you fasting? Which is another thing. Well, Kelly and I agree on the stupid fasting thing to don't fast. There's so many moving parts and that's why I do consultations because I can go and talk to the person one-on-one -on -one, and we go through everything. Like people are like, should I go back to when I was in utero? I'm like, yo, take us back to where you, when you were in your mama's womb, were you breastfed, were you vaginally birthed? Did you get enough bacteria? Were you C-section baby? You know, did you, have you had one antibiotic since born? Um, we go through it all. City water, which all that fluoride and the chlorine mm -mm, messes up. Next, is up, messes up the floor of the microbiome in your gut. Um, let me see what time is it? Okay, yes, I gotta keep hold of the time because I gotta feed my horses. Uh, best fat sources for uh, to lower blood sugar spikes. There is no such thing as the best fast fat sources. It's animal fats, and it's 
if you have a histamine reaction to them or not, and if your gallbladder is working. So everything's contextual. You know, says she is sweet, but I prefer your bluntness that that's how I communicate. So I am less likely to mis misunderstand it. Yeah. I mean, look, for those who follow her, you know, thank you so much. I've got a lot of uh, positive uh, feedback. So I appreciate that. I really do. Um, I think the reason why I think I want to clarify why I'm so blunt and um, it's because it was, I think it was the first year that I was coaching. If you guys go back to my video catalog, I was bubbly and energy and all right, everybody. I was like that until somebody got injured off of my recommendations. And before live streaming, <laughs> live streaming really jacked me up. Okay. You know, live streaming pulls out another part of you that, you know, you're kind of like, you're not like I'm talking to my computer screen. And so in the beginning, people say such rude things to me. I'll be like, what'd you say? Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Honey, child, I ain't going to take this. So that was one thing which gave me that reaction. The number, number two, I, I can't lie. Like, girl, got to keep it real. I mean, I can soften it, but I, I'm going to say it. The other thing is, is that that, that client was her husband. And he did the same protocol I put together for her. Now she didn't become extremely electrolyte deficient, but he did. And he was sent to the hospital for two days. After that, I don't care. I don't care how rude I am, how blunt I am. I am not going to injure people. I'm not going to say it's all gray. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not going to hurt people. I'm not. I've seen too many people get hurt by other recommendations that just eat a bunch of meat and eat salt and you're going to be okay. I can't do it. I can't do it. I do my due diligence. I do my research. I learn about all diseases. I learn about all the things that people are developing, the gout, the hemochromatosis, the uh, thyroid problems, the um, histamine reactions that people are getting, the electrolyte issues, the damage of the heart that you can do to your heart by not balancing your electrolytes over time. And I will scream it in people's faces to, to not, I'm not going to hurt nobody. I don't care. I will not hurt people with my advice. I watch too many. I'm not talking about Kelly. I'm talking about just in general. I talk, I see too many people make this sound so easy. It's not, you know, I've been screaming and, and we evolve and we learn. So Kelly, she's evolved and learning that fat is important. She says that, that her clients are telling her that she, they're having problems on only meat. And then she was like, Oh, well, what's the whole thing about fat? So I'm really proud of her for that. I, and she did say it mentioned in, in the interview, Stephanie's been talking about fat forever. And I have, because I don't want to injure people. I am not going to injure people. I'm not. And if I come across as an a-hole because of it, then that's the way I got to do it because I want you guys to be okay. I do. I can't even, I can't even fathom when that happened to her husband. I, I, I felt like I was going to die. I was like the, the feeling of shame and disgust is it's like, it, it's like, I can't describe it. I'm not going to mess anybody up. I'm not, I will not. I don't care if I'm the Simon Cowell of this whole world. I will not mess people up. And that's, that's how I start talking in my last, like probably hundred videos. Uh, what does the consistent gurgling in your stomach mean? It's either that you're hungry or you're having severe histamine, like leaky gut candida, like bloat. They're probably having leaky gut histamine reactions. My mom has no gallbladder and gets a very loose stool after eating any fat and she's suffering from Alzheimer. What do I do? Um, try to get some oxpile in her. That's the start. Try to get some lipase in her and make sure that she's eating fat in small amounts with protein. That'll help also with the digestion of it and get to give her some daily women, lemon, women, women water. Baba Wawa. <laughs> My mom, okay, Red. Uh, let me see here. Hi, I'm late. No, no, it's okay. It's okay, Tina. Oh my god, I finally caught you live. Sending love from Japan. Oh I wonder if the borders are up with Japan. I want to travel so bad now. I was like before, I was like, I don't care if the world's falling, world's falling apart. I'm not gonna travel. I've traveled so much, I don't care. Now I'm like, 
excuse my friend. He's like kept calling me and videoing me from Belgium. I was like, no, don't do that. You're making me jealous. I want to go to Antwerp. I want to go to, to Brussels. Hmm. But I got to pay for all this stuff on my property. By the way, you guys, for those who just found me, I just moved here. I left California because I didn't like all the garbage that went down. I cannot. This is where my bluntness comes in strong. I woke up one day and I was like, oh, hell to the not. I am not staying in this nonsense. I am not. I will not. So for those who follow me, that's how I talk. I left. I want freedom. I want to breathe. I want to live my own life. And then I started wearing, watching time go by. And I'm like, oh my God, I want, I need to get my horse out of here. I may not be able to get him out. Then it was like, oh my God, there may not be enough water. I moved to a state where there was water. I was too scared. Actually, Kelly lives close to me now. <laughs> we just figured it out. I'm in Tennessee and she's in, I think, North or South Carolina, one of them states. But, uh, and she's near the mountains. So she's smart. And she's, she's, and she, I'll tell you one thing we do agree on. Okay, we none of us like the Pokemon, man. None of us like the Pokemon, honey child. Mm -mm. No, sorry, we don't. We both, her, her and I are like two pods and a, a pea, peas in a pod when it comes to no Pokemon. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, how to increase stomach acid naturally? Um, it would definitely be doing like a little bit of apple cider vinegar shot if you don't have a histamine reaction or lemon water prior to eating something. Uh, also getting your stress down and eating protein. Don't be vegan. If you don't want your stomach acid to drop, do not be vegetarian or vegan. So not fabulous. Um, what's your opinion on, on deficit on carnivore? I, I sit all day on deficit on carnivore. I sit all day losing nothing. Stop. I'm confused. Can you rephrase that question, Tina? I don't get it. You're not going to lose weight because you do carnivore. You have to fix your hormones. I don't know. Did that help? It's not about calories, y'all. People have gone on carnivore to lose weight. What the? Heck? No. No, no, no. No, no, no. If your gallbladder, not gallbladder, sorry. Well, that too. But if your thyroid is jacked, which a lot of women, I coach, I've coached thousands of people over the years, honey child, it's going on a long time. I remember the first video I did about keto. I think that was 2000 something, 2010 or 11. I can't remember, but people were like, oh my God, you know, make a meal plan for me. Lord, I didn't know nothing back then. That's why we evolved. But the point is that um, uh, I've, I, once you understand that you have to be in ketosis, your insulin and your blood sugar and your A1C must be on point. And I've done a video about all the numbers. If you go back, I'm going to put things in, in playlists because I've kind of gotten getting behind. But you want to make sure that your A1C, which is your hemoglobin cells measured over three months. It's not like they measure you for three months. It's how the cells react. It's a three month check of the cell. And uh, you check your A1C. That's a really good indication of what's going on with your A. If your A1C is too high, you ain't going to lose weight, honey child. You're going to lose muscle. You're going to lose water. You're going to lose the fat. Okay. Uh, la, 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 la. What do you think about MCT oil? Garbage, waste of money? Waste of money. Hyped. Yes. Not good. Sorry. From the early, mid 2000s. Not good. Mid. Mid? No, like the 2015 hype of MCT oil is garbage. No, just if you want lauric acid, you're not going to get in an MCT oil. They said it's so great for the brain. No, this is. Sorry, the coconut oil. Unrefined. Virgin. Mm hmm Lack of virgin. Hey. Okay. Um, I love white rice. How do we eat white rice? I'm all about that. So that would be for people who don't want to be in ketosis. Um, that would be low carb, high fat. That's LCHF, which I coach that as well. I coach, I don't coach, coach just keto omnivore anymore. And some woman got all picky. Don't call it keto omnivorous. I will call it whatever I want to. This is where Stephanie has an attitude. So funny how people tell you how to label whatever you label. I do keto omnivore. I eat, uh, eat a high, I, I eat mostly carnivore, but I have plants. I decided to go off carnivore because I am not going to get bloated on avocados, which are such an important part of your electrolytes. Um, Because I don't have a histamine reaction to, I have no latex allergy. 
but I will not do rice. I will not. And this is where Kelly and I agree. She ain't going to do no rice. Neither am I. But for those who have hypoglycemia, okay, severe, we're talking postprandial, we're talking reactive, we're talking chronic. Or for people who've got a thyroid issue and they cannot balance their blood sugar, insulin resistant people who cannot balance their insulin and blood sugar, then I, su I then I suggest that they go on low carbohydrate fat, which is still starch based, but in small amounts and higher in fat until they can transition over to keto. People who are having severe histamine do not do carnivore for uh, for weight loss. You're just going to jack your thyroid up. Mm -mm. No, child, you got to get them fat macros down to a T. Okay, let me see. How long does a histamine reaction heart palpitation typically last? Um, they normally last 24 hours. If you completely get it out of your diet, that's a great question. They can last up to two days if you're reacting severely to a food. But uh, yeah, if you guys didn't know that, heart palps can be from an electrolyte deficiency or from a histamine reaction or your thyroid. Those are the three main reasons you feel your heart go dunk, 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 dunk. Or dunk, 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 especially at night. Uh, any reason someone have may have seizures? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so that can be from pharmaceutical use or drinking too much. Uh, it can be from uh, just pure abuse to the body. People can start developing seizures. It's very, very rare. We don't have enough of the right foods, the right nutrients, tools to fix the car. Plus you're staying up late and taking some, you know, stuff you shouldn't be taking. But if you develop it or if you've got uh, epilepsy, then you need to get out the, oh yeah, high blood sugar, diabetes, that can give you seizures. So that's where being ketotic, doesn't matter if you're doing carter, carnivore or keto omnivore, uh, Stephanie, how does eating animal fat affect, uh, estranged? What? Estranged? We're talking about estrogen? You mean estrogen. Elena, did you mean estrogen? Uh, sorry, can you rewrite that? That's estranged. You mean estrogen. You mean how it doesn't affect your estrogen at all, if that's what you meant. Uh, thank you. What is the dosage for microdosing broccoli? Uh, you start off doing, it depends on how bad you have a histamine reaction, but you can start off with just a little charlotte, a little, a tablespoon or half a tablespoon and you eat it with protein. So you digest it slowly, uh, protein and fat. And, uh, you could wait three days and increase it by the double, no reaction. Then each week you would go up, uh, uh like a tablespoon essentially. If you keep reacting, then you have to keep working on the gut to seal up that leaking gut, because that's typically why people develop histamine to those types of foods. Uh, yes, I get leg cramps if I don't get enough electrolytes. Yes, and don't do those electrolyte powders. They're garbage. They use a lot of chlorides, and they're bad for your biliary duct system. A lot of you guys already have liver and a low. you have a low um, kidney function. A lot of you guys have a low uh, GFR which is the glomolecular filtration rate, something like that. Uh, what is the best, what best to lose only 15 pounds have stalled? It's your hormones, Tina. Honey, child, your hormones. Look, let me tell you the, the fat gaining hormones. Insulin, this is if they're jacked up. Otherwise, they're great. Insulin, if you're aromatizing in the fat cells, estrogen. And if your blood sugar is too high, but that's insulin uh, or your thyroid. And if you're, you're low T3, which if you watch the video with Katie, the videos on um, thyroid, then that should help you understand how the thyroid works between hyper and hypo and the T4 and the T3 because T4 makes the hormone, but you can't use it. it has to be converted into T3. You have to check your reverse T3, your T1, T4, T3. TPO antibodies and you should check your blood sugar, like your insulin or your, uh, if you're getting a full thyroid panel six weeks apart twice uh but i don't know if you booked a consultation i could talk to you and narrow it down it's not that hard for me because i've been doing this for a long time how do i hire you, you go to stephanieperson.com book a consultation yep 
And if the time doesn't suit you, because it's all on times, email me through the contact page and I might be able to squeeze you in between, especially all from Australia and from Asia. Okay, let's see. There's 106 watching. Hit the like button. Yes, y'all. There's 109 now. Y'all hit the like button because I don't check to see who's liking up the stream. I'll give you some jazz hands. No, I'm kidding. I'll give you some stuff sarcasm. Let me see. Friendly X3 says, I've looked through Insta and YouTube, and I'm not seeing recommendations on total carbs. How much cruciferous vegetables or veggies per day do you recommend currently carnivore? Um, for the fiber, for the prebiotic fiber, not to poop. I'm not talking about pooping. Uh, for electrolytes, um, Lord, there's one fly, like one. It's driving me insane. Okay. Uh, you can do a handful measured. If you don't have any histamine to vegetables, a handful measured cooked. If you have certain histamine to certain plants, it's a handful measured raw before cooked down. And you could do it only at lunch. And if you still have histamine, do it every other day and cut it down, 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 down. I don't know what your histamine levels are, you guys. That's where I would be talking to you personally. It'd be so much easier than blanketed, blanketed, blanket, blanketed comments. Barrett says, howdy. How, I don't have a gallbladder. Would, uh, would I have on issues of eating? Yeah, your body, I definitely watch the replay because I just went through the whole thing that your body finds a new place to put the gallbladder salts. I mean, the bile salts from the liver and how you do that to get your rest and blood sugar stable and, and clean out the biliary duct system, make sure the liver is functioning or taking some of the supplements like Tuca, like blah, 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 blah. I'm just repeating myself. Um, what's my opinion on milk and cream? No. And yeah. First of all, grass-fed raw is the best. Uh, if you're trying to do carnivore, don't do it. If you're doing it for like a week experiment to try to get the microbes in, otherwise there's too many carbs. You can't adapt on it when there's milk. You can't. If you're doing low carb, high fat, that's the best time to eat raw milk, drink raw milk or cream. This light does not adjust. Trying to make me a white girl. Uh, <laughs> don't get triggered. I am silly. Do you recommend supplemental organ meats? I recommend eating organ meats. I just bought a bunch today. Um, although there's this company in Australia, they do, it's so cool. They do a liver, desiccated liver and kelp. So you get the iodine or just do oyster meat. I mean, oyster extract. That's if you don't have a histamine reaction to it. Do you currently own any bottles of MC2 oil? No, Barrett, I just explained how it's garbage. It's a waste of money, too expensive. What's up, Courtney? It's been a long time. Mojave Stalker, is it, it, is it already night where you, no, it's almost nighttime. Not yet. Uh, ketovore. Keto. Well, ketovore is like a keto carnivore. I just call it high fat carnivore, but it is sort of a ketovore. And there's avivore, which is avocado carnivore. What is the benefit? What is the benefit difference in low carb high fat versus keto? Well, keto is better for me because ketones. Your body's in a state of ketosis. They work like slow burning logs, right? You have sustained energy all day long, which means that the thyroid can heal. Your reproductive system can heal. When I hit the gym, I'm like, what? Like that, right? When you do carbs, you they're like paper in a fireplace. They burn real fast, real high. You got to boost energy. Then you freaking crash. Then you got to eat three hours later really, really quick before you start developing adrenal insufficiencies or or, or you know, cortisol, glucagon, insulin, boom, 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 So basically being in ketosis puts you more like this, eating carbs puts you more like this, which does damage is called uh, advanced glycation in product. Uh, but people who need to do low carb high fat who just have hypoglycemia is so bad they can't get into ketosis and their gallbladder's jack. If you have a gallbladder problem, you have to do low carb high fat. If the supplements don't work, like lipase and, and tuca and all this stuff, if they don't work, then you have to do low carb, high fat, and then work through the gallbladder, get it to function properly, clear out the bile, 
the, the sludge, sorry, or do stone cleanse. And then you can start adding back in the fat because that's what's at. That's the, how a child can be 50, 55 years old and, and have my skin do the right thing. Not because I'm black, because straight up in my 30s, when I didn't, when I was doing like low calorie diets, my skin was wrinkling on my chest, legit. And my mother was like, she poked me in the chest. She's like, oh, you're getting a wrinkled chest. And I was like, oh, I really am because I had noticed it myself. So uh, eating fat adds uh, fat to dermis layers and to the cell lining of every cell. It's freaking amazing. It is. See, it just, it does the skin good when you eat fat in your fitties. You hear that? That's, that's that fly. Bitch, I got you. My fly zapper got that one fly. I was like, bruh, bruh. uh, the, the. Pokemon is so dangerous. Totally. I must be high in the comments. Do you have a refrigerator, refrigerator tower? Lock? Yes. I put them in the refrigerator so they don't oxidize, dies, oxidize as much reactive oxygen species. You got the uh, Pokemon and began losing one fourth cup of blood an hour. Oh my God. Fina, oh, you're, you're such a sweetheart. She said, Lord have mercy. A bunch of K1 stopped it. Liver is good for K1 and K2. Thank you, information on your. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you, the information you're putting out is much appreciated. Thank you, Cassie. Nicole, heart palpitations after eating after eating meals cause electrolyte deficiency. Um, no, it sounds like histamine. Unless you're not drinking enough. I mean, you'd have to do an experiment, but it sounds like histamine. Loss of your menstrual cycle on keto. Uh, you're not adapted. Just because you do the diet the you're not adapted. Uh, I would consider a consultation, Leah, because uh, oh, it's complicated. It's complicated. Some say dom some come from Sverige, Norge, or Denmark. This fort. The complicated. You guys know I lived in Sweden. That was some Swedish. Uh, for those of us who still who are on coffee, get off. <laughs> Shh, don't tell us don't, don't don't tell stephanie Shh. uh what fat can we add into make it useful ghee and eggs uh no it would cook the egg <laughs> in hot coffee um rob just get off the coffee bro get off the coffee and good for you mm -mm. i can count the ways you've been the only person that has said that eating too much meat is increasing my blood sugar from normal for but to 83 to 109. Yeah, that's because when you eat too much meat, your body can only chew, yeah, 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 swallow, digest, and you only have so much hydrochloric acid that can break down with pepsin and protease that can break and, and lipase to break down that protein to then be able to enter the bloodstream via the intestine. And if you guys are taking in too much protein and you don't have enough digestive equipment, the body will just take what, what it can and convert it into glucose. It just won't use it. Especially if you just eat too much protein in general, irregardless of the digestive enzymes and the chloric acids. Any advice on supplements for electrolytes? Um, avocado, salt, and magnesium glycinate. If you can't do avocados, try uh, for potassium, then you might try uh, oyster extract. If you can't do oyster, oyster extract, then you might do potassium citrate. 400 milligrams a day, two in the morning, two in the evening. Let me see. I get bioidentical hormones. Get off of them. Get off the bioidenticals when you can. Just check thyroid. Will no, Well, unless they, they have to do a full thyroid panel, they have to do it twice. So be careful because... The problem with, with thyroid tests, they can show that you're producing T3 and your TSH is normal, but they can't see if it's getting into the cells. And that's why doing two six weeks apart, six week. By the way, I have a sponsor. Uh, my sponsor is called Let's Get Checked. You guys can do a full thyroid panel there. I just decided to do affiliate programs because I'm trying to help my fur babies. You can also don donate on my, I've y'all never eat bug before in all these years, but now I'm doing it. 
yes, I call it e bagging <laughs> for my fur babies, only for the fur babies to get a fence. So they, um, and I need to have a double gate system so I don't get hit by a car. Um, so let's get checked. It's the code is Stephanie 30 in caps. And I'll put it in the show notes below. Now I still haven't done it. Can you believe I'm the worst businesswoman of all time? Let's see here. At least I learned my shite. At least I focus on that. Okay. I use one tablespoon wet organic coconut cream to heavy cream. No, 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 no. Don't jammy. This is such a bunch of processed garbage. Don't put organic stevia and heavy cream and the coconut cream and all this. Y'all need to drink some water and get off the coffee. Coffee is so bad for you guys. Don't even know. Uh, so many docs refuse to run a, a reverse T3. I know, Leah. Love butter in my coffee. Madeline, get off the coffee. Y'all, it's dehydrating your skin. It's lowering your L-tyrosine. You can't balance your electrolytes on it. You just can't. Trust me, I've been doing this a long time. You become chronically dehydrated and don't even know it. Uh, speaking water, you mean sparkling water? Uh, it's, it, you don't, you can do it for like pleasure, but don't do it for hydration because there's too much air in it. I'm epileptic and coming off of a seizure drug. And I've worked with a few epileptic, epileptics, by the way, who've done very well. I've gotten their seizures down to 25 a day, down to zero. Um, been keto for one year. I've had four mini seizures today after having no drugs. Any help or advice? <sighs> Well, the one client that I'm really proud of, uh, we had to crank up the fat high in her. We had to lower that protein quite low and up that fat, but that's all I can say without being able to talk to you directly. Uh, could I get some fat from H, what's HWC? I don't know what that is. Does cabbage cause histamine reaction? In some people, yes, not all. Doesn't It doesn't in me, question. I've lost 33 pounds this year from keto, but I've seen what I've I've seen to have. You seem to have hit a plateau. Uh, you probably lost a lot of water and some muscle, so you got to get into ketosis, Courtney. All my videos are the suggestions. Dies laughing, white girl. At like, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, is keto mojo good? It's it, yes. God, I'm so behind on all these post-workout meals. Um, pork belly or ribeye um, with an avocado. Uh, do you have any animal fats on your skin? Uh, not right now. Not right now. No. Uh, oh, I was getting late too. I got to feed the horses, y'all. Uh, what do you drink instead of coffee? I drink water. Bone broth has oxalates and glutamate. Do meat broth. I drink that. Um, let me see here. Respect. Thank you for all your content and real talk. You're amazing. Thank you. Ribeye is king. Thank you for everyone to join this live stream. Um, I appreciate it. And I think after all, I think I broke my plateau uh, starting off probably about a month ago with consistently being able to talk to you guys. And I am doing a real talk, real people with real talk series. I have two interviews coming up this week, week. So watch out for it. Trigger alert for Kelly Hogan fans. I am totally against doing carnivore for a long time. I've just watched too many pro people develop severe problems. If you don't know how to recognize, recognize them, you may not, ex bleh, you may not know that they exist, but if you listen to some of my real people, real talks, you'll start to see that use it as a, an amazing tool, an emergency to deal with super bad histamine, macas, mast cell activation, SIBO. But then the goal is to get off and diversify your foods. Always remember that a diversification of foods gives you a diversification of micro and macronutrients plus the bacteria. Eating ribeyes all the time and red meat is a problem for those who have leaky gut, who begin to develop hemochromatosis, high iron, and gout, who have problems with their GFR. Do, <clears throat> do not do high protein on a carnivore diet. It must be high fat, Ketogenic. 
Uh, thank you, Ruth. Thank you, everyone, for joining my live stream. And I got to go because I got some energy and some energy and energy, energy, energy. Woo! At 55, 15 years and almost going on my 16th year. Boom, boom, boom. Now I got to go take some care of my horses <laughs> before they're like, Mommy, we're hungry. Even though they got a ton of grass. I know, Michelle, you coming. I'm not shadow banned anymore. I'm so fabulous. So fabulous. Okay, guys, on the replay, don't forget to like up the stream. If you guys want me to talk about something, put it in the show notes below. Don't forget to share my content because that's how people find me. Uh, hit the all, hit the notification bell and all to know when I'm going live. If you want to find me, you can find me on Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic. And you can also find me where I put up stuff every day on my stories and sometimes on my wall, well, on my stories. Also, you can find me at Stephanie, the business person. That's my Facebook fan page. You can also sign up for uh, my course group, which I cover three diets and how to transition between the three of them. And also just general health and exercise, because, you know, I used to be a personal trainer for uh, 15 years. So, yes. Also, uh, you can book a consultation right here at stephanieperson.com. I'll put everything in the show notes below, or I think it's in the show, show notes below. And I'm out. I'm also still considering a day retreat for those who want to help me build my fence. To Because I just bought 10 acres, but I can only afford to fence two. And I want to be able to have these rescued horses go and experience this whole land. EDS? Is that erectile dysfunction? I don't know what EDS is. No, I'm saying it wrong. I don't know what it is. It's 10 in Texas? What? I got. I left Texas, honey child. I did not like it. Mm -mm. No. Uh-uh. I had to go to Tennessee. Gorgeous. Is it ever okay to eat a bit of fat steak once in a while? You can eat fatty steak all day. What you talking about? Not all day, but you. Yes, eat steak. Martha's all. I will help. Yeah, I'm gonna do like build a fence and like a meet and greet and like uh like a like a web and not webinar in in person seminar. All right, this girl gas to go. Um, I will put up like a sign up for it on my site and figure it out. And then I have to actually really vet everybody because I'm like paranoid of crazy people on the internet. But of course it's not Martha. I'm getting my thyroid checked tomorrow. Once I get the results, I'm hiring you. I've got to go to get whatever the, okay. Fino for the Pokemon. Um, I have some strategies to get that crap out of you. So that is the most important thing. Okay. We got some strategies to get that nastiness out of your body now that they're saying the crap don't work okay uh is one avocado a day optimal for keto for his uh for potassium yes that's for potassium yes palm d a uh, palmy d all right uh coolio all right thank you everyone energy 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 and this girl's out i gotta feed some horses and a donkey please it's still hot in here. Look at this. Let me show you the temperature. Oh, Lord have mercy. I need to turn my air conditioning. Look at that. That is too hot. This is too bright. Mm, it's too bright. Look at that. 82. So I've been like, just like perspiring the whole time. It's not fabulous. But I look more golden brown in this color, right? Mm. Okay, guys, enough of my stupidity. Bye. Think, 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 think.